In the first half of this year, Belize saw an incredibly high number of violent attacks affecting children. There was an awful event where a primary school child was murdered as part of the gang warfare. Together with our partners, I thought we need to look differently at what we're doing to address the challenge of violence um, on our streets, violence in our communities. And so we spoke about what, what could be an appropriate response, what, what more can be done. We both agreed that a community-based response was really what was needed. We were looking for community-based partners that had a presence in the communities that they were serving, that were trusted by the children and families that they intended to reach, that were using innovative approaches with other partners, in other words, leveraging the skills and resources of other partners to turn something small, an idea, into something that was bigger than, um, than each of the individual partners could offer. YES is Youth Enhancement Service. We have three areas that we work with. We have our Outreach Center, Outreach and Advocacy Center, we have our Teen Mom Center, and we have our Training Center, which is located in Lars Bank. We have been working with high schools, we have been working with primary schools, and we said, you know what, we need to target the preschools because a lot of abuse have been happening to younger children, and so we said, no, it's time to focus on the preschoolers, the toddlers. Our target is 20 preschools and 10 parent sessions. So we do a puppet show, we teach them about the good and bad touch with a puppet show, and they're all excited, they laugh, they smile, they dance with them, they sing with them. Now boys and girls, a bad touch I touch them. It helps them to, to learn because some of them enjoy singing the puppets. You see the different reactions, some of them start laughing, they start clapping, making a lot of noise. It, it gets their um, attention, they're more focused because if we just sit there with the kids and tell them about good and bad touch, they won't really pay attention. They want something that excites them at the same time. So we use the puppets to gain their attention and to also let them have fun while learning. So the parents were teaching them like friendly child play or positive discipline or the ways, different ways how to stimulate your child, play with your child. We teach them also about the different abuses, emotional abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. We teach them all the types of abuse and we just also give them a little rundown about the good and bad touch. Majority of these young ladies who are in our program are teen moms. These girls have been a victim of sexual abuse themselves, physical abuse, and so the program have been a program to help them. We have done basic counseling, just being in the session, talking to these girls, allowing them to open up and talk about their experiences to others. You know, the program have definitely helped them a lot. Nine years ago, give birth to Habida Hawanar was steering committee. The ultimate objective is for cultural preservation and retrieval. Jankuno is a, the, a, a Garifuna cultural dance, a male dance, which is used to mock the colonial masters at that time. Habinoha Wanarawa is our form of Jankuno. This crown on your head while you're dancing actually represents the master. In an effort to find solution to the crime and violence, we firmly believe that starting at an early developmental level is perhaps the best way to deal with crime and violence. It involves life skills, it involves concentration, it teaches patience, it teaches 
teamwork. <laughs> what better way to keep the children them positively engaged, not to be involved in crime and violence, but rather getting engaged in something which will teach them discipline, something that will teach them teamwork, something that will ensure that they have a skill. The support and the partnership that we got from UNICEF is monumental in going a long way to ensure that we achieve those objectives. The Open Active Youth is an organization that was formed in 2012 and its main focus is to empower, educate and engage young people of the Mopan and surrounding communities. The violence that is escalating, for example, in Belize City is actually moving out into other communities such as Belmopan and we have seen firsthand how our youths have become more and more engaged in, in criminal and violent activity or they have a risk of becoming a victim. Well, in terms of armed violence, we have done many training in the past, but of more recent, we have partnered with UNICEF in a program that specifically speaks to armed violence. In that program, we are training 120 young people from Belmopan and Roaring Creek and neighboring communities. We, we take them outside of their communities to an area where they are actually locked in for the entire weekend and that way they free themselves up from whatever they face in their communities, in their homes, with their peers. What do you think the consequences should be if the rules are broken? Send them home. Okay, we, will, we are going to send them home according to, what, where is your name, sir? We're looking at anger management. Many of these young people have been pushed to where they become angry and they don't have any clue how to manage that anger. I was going through a little bit of like emotion problem because my brother died. When I first went out, I thought it was about just low and playing, but when you share it was about like teaching young people, youths about drugs, friends who they hang with, like try to be a leader, not a follower, like show, show the right way. Many of them are leaders in their own right. They're leaders in their communities, they're leaders among their peers, they're leaders with their siblings. Coming into the program, they may not display a positive leadership um, skills, but we're hoping that by the time they come out of the program that they'll be able to lead in a more positive way. Six months ago, I was someone who was liared. I like to tell my mom lie. I used to smoke. Used to be disrespectful. Well, not to my mom, but like to my teachers and other people to be disrespectful. We actually see the transformation in them and we see them turn into leaders and coming back and even facilitating training and coming back and giving testimonials. It changed me. So like how it changed me, I'm probably sure that it will change the rest of whoever. You will go through like mind changes, you will have friends that will tell you, oh, you weak, you this, you that, but it's your mind, you just have to put your mind to it and show them, no, I know I want to be, I want to be a leader, I know I follow. Project Heal is a program that falls under the St. Martin de Porres Parish that has been placed here to work with the children, teachers, and staff of St. Martin's de Porres School. Our plan primarily is to work with helping them further their academic success, but also a healing process to some of the experiences they've had throughout their lives. We have had various different programs under Project Heal that focused a lot on the academics. But what the partnership with UNICEF allowed us to do is to dig a bit deeper on what the child and parent is experiencing. Essentially what we did was we did a post-traumatic stress disorder assessment with over 200 students. And the whole concept behind it was essentially to explore uh, what traumatic incidents each child and in some cases parent has experienced and how that is presently impacting their lives and then obviously to do what it takes to address those issues. PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. It's actually an anxiety disorder and it's caused by experiencing events that are 
extremely stressful or distressing. When I was doing the PTSD evaluations, I was amazed because I didn't realize the level of exposure that these kids have to different traumas. And many of them have multiple traumas that they are exposed to. This includes domestic violence, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and just gang violence. You know, many of them have been in situations where their life was at risk. We were developed mainly based on the cry from the teachers. The teachers kept on saying, you know, the kids are going through so much, they need a counselor, they need therapy, there's so much things going on in their lives at home, we have to constantly compete with it. And I think that's been one of our biggest focus, to see how we can help the children heal. We meet weekly as a staff to discuss each case. Um, what happens then is we create a plan for each child, um, and it varies. Sometimes we need to get the parent involved immediately, sometimes we need to get the teacher involved immediately, sometimes we need both. So what happens is each child that comes to us for individual counseling is then we create an individualized plan per child. We are really blessed in St. Martin's to have Project Heal. It is not a project that any other school, primary school, or any other school in Belize has. What makes us stand out essentially is, yes, the cry initially started with, we want a counselor. But when we got in and we started talking to the teachers, talking to the parents, working with the kids, we realized that it was more need for a holistic care. Long term, I really want the children to be able to have the tools that will allow them to deal with their environment because we can't always change the environment around them. And the issues that they face are very complex. And so it's very important that they can know how to manage their anger and to have hope and to have a positive outlook despite everything happening. Yacha is a social platform for youth who want to utilize theater as a, as a medium for expression. My boy, want to come out here? Want to come out here? I run it! I run it! Ain't gonna join this! I run this! So the skit is called Gangs and Boys, right? And the skit really is about um, what happens when uh, a boy um, decides, perhaps because he's looking for fun, looking for love, um, he gets pushed into joining a gang. He chooses um, to look at gangs as a form of, of, of a family, of, of, of love and support. Hello, no. We did. Hello, we? You? One of the, the aspects of Walls Down is to get young people to engage in um, arts expression that will help them constructively, help them in their lives and their communities, and help them to build resilience against crime that they see around them every day. Um, normally, they're used to express themselves perhaps through anger, um, through violence that they see every day, and it's given a chance to explore their creative, uh, their creative um, talent and to see what else they can do and how, how else they can communicate um, that is not destructive to their, to their own existence. In our neighborhood, a lot of crime happens and we are, um, like all of us in the neighborhood, I think is already tired of seeing a lot of gang violence. There's a lot of um, hurt and pain. There's a lot of history of violence um, that has happened to the community. There's a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of talk about death. Not so much about hope, but a lot of, um, of the children speak sometimes about losing loved ones. Our brothers, cousins, mainly males, um, that, are, that have been caught up in the, in the gang culture um, within the community. Most children can't even go on a basketball court in present time Belize and feel safe. What was done as a concept is to go into communities and to um, allow, allow children within the communities to interact. And so was done really challenges the idea that uh, as a community um, we cannot come together and start the healing process and start to really look at how what we're doing affects our children. I think I need, need to know the answer now. If a child walks into a program 
a, a program that's being done with Yacha. It's not just what happens for the day, it's, it's what it means. It, it, could, it could be a word that you say, an encouragement that you, that you give them that really can extend beyond the lifetime of that program. That's how I really began to do what I did. One teacher said something one day that made a huge impact the rest of my life. So uh, it might look like a program to many, uh, but what you might say in one moment can change a child's life forever. And we need community action and we need people who have energy and who have passion and who aren't afraid to do new things, who aren't afraid to put themselves out there and say something needs to be done differently and we're doing it. If we can see more communities actively engaging, committing and providing of their own talents and, and resources to enable initiatives where they live to prevent violence through um, education and engagement of young people and so many other approaches, then we start to see then um, the building blocks that are necessary for long-term change related to violence start to take place.